Hi guys, Buildzoid here, and uh, well, you can you can see mem test windows, so you should already know what's 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 happening. Uh, that's right. Um, so this is a quick update on the uh, Viper 3800s, 3866 CL18 uh, memory kit. Um, I finally got like a you know stable overclock on it, so. Yeah, I figured we'd take a quick look at the at the performance and also the timings. And uh, yeah, also I've still not like I'm not a hundred percent certain what ICs are on this memory kit, but it's probably Hynix CJR, um, just because of the way it behaves. So just like in terms of how it times, what kind of frequencies it hits, it, it looks like it's CJR. Um, and yeah, there's not really anything else it could be. Um, so yeah, unfortunately, I like I've even upgraded, like I've updated even Typhoon Burner, and it still can't recognize the sticks. Like I'm still stuck with the. This is the latest version, and if we read, um, yeah, you can you can still see how it's still question mark right there, and uh, unfortunately, yeah. So you can see that this is a. Um, no, that's the wrong XMP. Well, I I don't know. It's not reading the right XMP profile right now. Anyway, it doesn't matter. So, yeah. Anyway, so you saw the mem test. Now we just need to do a quick uh, passive IDA just for latency and uh, uh, and bandwidth. And then we're going to go into the BIOS and take a look at the timings. For the overclock, I'm actually using the X570 Tai Chi from ASRock um, because basically the best way to learn if a motherboard is good is to just use the bloody board. Um, that's actually, well, I'm not sure. I don't think I've actually, I don't know what the current set of timings is. Um, it might be relatively auto heavy. The thing is I tried to get, like, I spent a lot of t time trying to get this memory kit to run gear down mode off, but that really doesn't work. Um, so yeah. Anyway, so we're getting about 66 nanoseconds, which, uh, I think like the lowest I had it in terms of settings I was messing with was around 65.1 um, and we're getting about 53 gigabyte uh, 54 gigs read we should be getting around I think it gets around 52 copy or 51 copy the copy's kind of slow yeah oh no it's getting 52.2 so yeah, now we're going to restart and check out the actual settings in the BIOS. So actually, th though, it could be also because I think I... No, I think I was running the same CPU overclock the entire time. Because the thing is, the latency test, like, if you downclock by 100 megahertz, it actually hurts the latency test, like, CPU clock. So, yeah, anyway, so right now I have the, the CPU in manual uh, overclock mode just because, you know, for, for consistency and IDA. But if you were actually trying to daily this, what you would do, you would go here, you would go there, you would go here, you would accept, and then you would do manual... And then you would punch in some random, well, damn it, ASRock BIOS. High value that isn't like, like, you don't want to do that. That causes issues. But something like that's fine. Then you set manual. Then you go five times scalar. And that's, that's your CPU overclock right there. Actually, you might want to maybe set like a small offset voltage. So Minus 500. Okay, that's in millivolts, right? Yeah. There we go. We're going to run minus 50. Yeah, minus 50 millivolts. Like, you can you can push it further. It's just that, like, this CPU below minus 100 doesn't work. So, it's not, like, there's no point really pushing it that low anyway. So, let's take a look at the timing. So, I stopped at 16, 19, 19, 37... 56, 4, 6, 16. Yeah, okay, so this is the fast ones. So, yeah, th these are the fast timings. So we'll just rerun IDA after this because I think it might have been... Because the other thing is, like, having mem test, right? Um, also, I just enabled PBO, so, you know, that, that'll bring up the... Because I think the latency test is actually relatively single core, so... 
um, we might actually like, you know, it might boost higher and <laughs> spit out a higher, lower latency as a side effect of that. But anyway, so yeah, 1616. TRP doesn't go any lower than this. Um, neither does TRCD or, well, TRCD WR maybe could, but I just wasn't bothered with messing with that one. Um, TRC, so this does have a timing, like a slight timing advantage over Rev E Micron because, um, so my Rev E, for example, doesn't do low TR, like doesn't do TRC this low. Um, this bottoms out at like, I can go as low as 55, but, um, yeah, for, for, like for convenience, I just settled at 56. I it might work at 55. It's just that, you know, I, I run a lot of different timing set, uh, combinations at this point. And this is like the first thing that was like, Hey, 400%. So let's roll with it. Um, yeah, so, you know, does 56 TRC, whereas uh, my Rev E, all of it needs over 60. So, you know, we have a small TRC advantage. Uh, T4 TRDs, same thing. Um, you know, this can run 4616, the Rev E. I think actually on the Rev E, I ended up at like 6624 um, or 6616, which is the same as 6624 because the T4 timing only applies if you're. RRDs are lower, like, if your RRDs add up to less than your T4, like, whatever. Like, basically, the, I had the Rev E looser on the TRRD T4 timings, but I think that might have been me being lazy more so than the Rev E not being capable of more. But anyway, so 4616 for me evidently works just fine. WTRS, uh, this doesn't go lower. At 4, it starts causing memory issues, or at least it did when I was messing with it. Um, 10, 10, this doesn't actually go lo lower, like 10 is the minimum for TWR, in case you were wondering. Uh, SCLs, you know, 4, 4, 480 TRFC, 450 straight up won't post, um, so that's kind of the thing. Um, and yeah, this is a big advantage over my Rev E on the, the TRFC as well, because the TRFC on my Rev E for 37, 33 megahertz is, uh, what is it, like 600 something? Yeah, I think it's like 620 or something. So, yeah, CJR is like, like, I'm surprised that CJR isn't more famous because it's like, it's it's cheaper than BDI. It's re and actually these days you can get some like, you know, you can get like 3600, 17, 19, 19 kits or 3600, 16, 19, 19 kits. R really pretty cheap. It's not quite as cheap as like 3000 megahertz rated Rev E, but you're not looking at like BDI prices. You're looking at memory kits in that sort of like seventy to eighty dollar range, and Rev E actually gets up there um, into that same sort of price range. And the thing is, like CJR just runs tighter, right? Like, admittedly, it also comes on kits that are rated at thirty six hundred CL sixteen normally or thirty six hundred seventeen. Um, but yeah, it's just like the the sub timings are just better. So. Yeah, it's not a huge amount though, but it, you know, like you're not gonna make up a TRFC advantage because the thing is Ryzen, like on Ryzen, like Rev E has an advantage, like Rev E has the advantage over CJR where it can like clock stupid high, but on Ryzen you don't want to do that anyway because you desync your Infinity Fabric and you screw your your like you screw you screw yourself on latency, so that's kind of the thing is just like. Uh, yeah, and everything, like, everything is auto for the memory here, but yeah, so that, that's kind of the thing, is just, like, Rev E's main advantage is, like, it can clock stupid high, but if you're going to be limited to 37, 33 megahertz anyway, or, you know, 3600 or 3666 or 3800, right, um, depending on whatever your Infinity Fabric is capable of, then it's just, like, you just want the tightest timings at 3733. And at 3733, it basically goes like, so you have B die, which is good. Then you have E die, which is good. So that's the four gigabit IC from Samsung. I refer to Micron's revision E as Rev E um, because that way I don't have to say, well, I, I do it anyway because somebody's going to get like, otherwise people will get confused when I say E die. But yeah, so B die, E die, CJR, I think AFR slots in somewhere in between. They're 4 gigabit AFR, not 8 gigabit AFR. 8 gigabit AFR is trash. 4 gigabit AFR is like a slower version of EDI. Um, and then you have, after CJR, you'd have the Rev E. And then below that, you'd have like your 8 gigabit AFR, your 8 gigabit MFR, 8 gigabit C... I want to say C... Uh, CDI probably... 
uh, D die, eight gigabit. There's also a four gigabit D die, which I actually think is technically above MFR and AFR, um, eight gigabit variant. Um, l worse than the four gigabit. MFR four gigabit, I think, is also kind of sucks. <laughs> so. Yeah, anyway, there, there's a lot of ICs, and then there's also all the different, like, mi Micron revisions, which I can't even remember, so, yeah. Anyway, here's the sort of the, the, the voltages, so just 1.446 volts, and I'm going for 1.446 and not 1.5, because I have heard that Hynix memory chips seem to be more sensitive to voltage than, say, Samsung, so... Yeah, it's just like with these, like with Samsung memory chips, I feel pretty confident whacking 1.5 volts into them. Honestly, even more than that is probably just fine. It's just that I don't really like the thing is you're not going to notice a massive performance difference between 1.5 volts and 1.6 volts because like the time your sub timings hit the floor at 1.5 or even 1.35 for that matter. Like your, the the sub timings really don't care that much how much voltage you're running like they go really low pretty much regardless of what like actual voltage you're running so the only thing you're really improving is your primaries and you know going from 1.5 to 1.6 isn't really going to make some massive difference it's not going to be like a two tick drop in your primaries so i don't see the point of like you know, unnecessary, like, one point, like, I wouldn't daily 1.6 volts, because it's not really going to perform much better than 1.5, um, but anyway, with Hynix, I have heard of cases of, like, one, like, chips straight up just randomly dying at 1.5 volts, so, you know, it's just, like, I'm going to stick to 1.446, uh, um, or 1.45, which this, this board can't set that, so we're going to go with 1.446, because that's close enough. Um, but yeah, so that, that's kind of the thing is like, I'm just not sure how, how CJR like behaves long-term. And I think I've heard of, like, I've heard of one other person well, might've been AFR, not CJR that they killed, but they killed something from Hynix and it's just like, and it wasn't like stupid high voltage. It just up and died. So that's the other funny thing with memory is like some of it degrades and then a lot of it just randomly stops working completely. Like it just goes from being perfectly fine to not being fine at all. Um, anyway, so yeah, most of most of the rest of the settings is auto. Like the, really that you don't need to do much of anything to, to get decent, you know, settings. Um, and I wonder if this might like WTRL might go lower. Um... But, yeah, and TCW, I might be able to, well, TCWL might also go a bit lower, but and I don't really feel like pushing it too much. So, like, already, like, I think this isn't too far from, like, fully dialed in. So, anyway, let's get into Windows. And we're just going to rerun IDA just to make sure that the previous runs weren't, like, well, right now we have PBO. So, it'll probably improve the latency. Also, if you're wondering about the cooling, I'm just going to check that. Bam, there, there's the cooling. As you can clearly see, there's the, like, other than the stock cooler, there's nothing actually cooling the memory sticks. So, yeah, <laughs> it's just like, and I have to say the heat spreaders that these come with, um, they are exceptionally flimsy. Um... Which was great when I was trying to pull them off so that I could check the ICs. Um, and then really disappointing when I pulled them off and realized that the ICs are relabeled anyway. So I didn't actually learn anything from doing that. So, yeah, that kind of sucks. Anyways, back to the postcode. I'm going to go where, studio mode. There we go. So let's just rerun IDA. The thing is, is like, the, I, I like the thing is when you're dialing in your memory settings, you want to have the CPU frequency locked, um, so that you're because otherwise it's just gonna you like your your latency, your copy, your read speeds are gonna go up and down a bit with your CPU clock, and so it's gonna screw over your memory performance results, right? Like if you're trying to figure out if one set of settings is faster than another set of settings, like. If your CPU clock is going up and down, yeah, it's not going to work. So, that's kind of the thing. 
Yeah, so, okay, we're still getting 65.9. Wait, are we still at 4.1? Oh, I did did hit escape. I didn't hit F10. So, yeah, <laughs> we're still at 4.5. I mean 4.15. But anyway, so, okay, so it is consistently 65.9. So, yeah, not the, like, not exactly... Well, the the thing is, is like, yeah, the, this is competitive with Rev E. Is basically what 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 this comes down to is like, you know, if, if you were like super concerned about getting Rev E, you don't need to be. You can get CJR. It'll actually probably be a slight like the. I, I think I never really got my Rev E below sixty seven, um, at least with like fixed CPU clocks, or sixty six. Like, so this has a slight latency advantage. Um, I really wish I could run it without gear down mode because that would actually make the advantage bigger. But yeah, th I think Rev E actually runs without GDM. Like my Rev E, I think I was running it without GDM. So that's probably like, you know, so so that's another thing is just like, yeah, the, the, this doesn't have all of the benefits that it could. But really the GDM is only like one more nanosecond. So the thing is, the thing is, is just like, yeah, the, this stuff, like CJR is fine. It's It's totally viable. Um, I wouldn't necessarily, like, if you can get CJR, get CJR, if you can get Rev E, get Rev E, if you could get B-Dye for the same prices as CJR or Rev E, get freaking B-Dye, right? Like, it's kind of like, if CJR and Rev E are the same price, buy CJR. If CJR and B-Dye are the same price, buy B-Dye. So, yeah, um, that's kind of that. Anyway, there's not really anything else to show you, I mean, you know, solve totally passive cooling with the the i mean it is on an open air test bench so you could argue that hey it doesn't get as like that is actually one concern with memory is like if your memory gets unstable while playing video games it's probably because your gpu is cooking it like just just by the way <laughs> like that's normally what happens is like and the same for actually cpu overclocks if you have an overclock that's stable and then it do isn't stable when you play games it's because the game, like, the, because your GPU ends up heating up the air inside the computer so much that it destabilizes everything else, um, which isn't really that uncommon. Though I've not yet checked, like, I need to do a hair hair dryer test on CJR. Like, BDI is really, really sensitive to it. Like, it crosses a certain temperature threshold, and you just get errors for days. Um, but I've not yet checked how, how CJR uh, responds to elevated temperatures. If it's relatively temperature resistant, that would be really, really cool. Like, if I can bring up the memory sticks to, say, I don't know, um, a little over 60 degrees, um, and, and they still run the same as at, like, 40, then it's just like, okay, that's that's pretty good. <laughs> Though the the thing is is like depending on your case airflow, you might be like you might end up with your sticks even warmer than that. But yeah. Anyway, like I don't have a good way to get memory sticks because like the thing is I have a hot air station, but that starts at a hundred degrees. Um, so I'm not exactly like interested in pointing that at a running system. Um, and the hair dryer doesn't go above sixty. So yeah, that's that's kind of that. Um, anyway, so, yeah, that's it for the video, um, you know, that, that, that you can, like, CJR, it's, it's, like, slightly faster than Rev E, that's, that's all it really does, um, yeah, and it's relatively easy to overclock, you saw the timings, like, time's just fine, so, yeah, that's it for the video, thanks for watching, like, share, subscribe, leave any comments, questions, suggestions down in the comment section below, and if you'd like to support what I do here with uh, actually hardcore overclocking, which includes, you know, funding things like this memory kit that I tested here, because that's, that's not a review sample, so <laughs> thanks patrons for, for funding it. Um, you know, I do have a Patreon where you can support me directly, and then the other way you can support the channel is through buying uh, AHOC merch from Teespring, um, and there's like, there's shirts, stickers, posters, socks, um, and yeah, and you can find a link to both the Patreon and the Teespring store down in the description below, and they do help out immensely with running the channel, so if you'd like to check them out, that would be awesome, and yeah, that's it for the video, so thanks for watching, and goodbye.